Hey everyone, today I'm gonna show you everything there is to know about the detail tool in Lightroom. I'm gonna explain every single slider, every value that I use and why I use it. Alright, so let me quickly show you. This is a fully edited picture that I've adjusted all sorts of values and all sorts of sliders on. The only thing that is missing is the detail tool. So I'm gonna zoom in one to one here and that is definitely the first thing you wanna do. You have a little preview right there, but you really wanna zoom in so you actually see what you're doing with these sliders. I'm quickly gonna zoom in two to one so you see the differences in the actual adjustments even better even though I usually like to generally keep it at one to one if I edit for myself but of course after video compression and everything you're gonna be able to see the adjustments better in a two to one perspective. So the first thing I adjust in pretty much all of my pictures is actually the color slider. By bringing this slider to the right, you will get rid of the purple and green sensor noise in your photo, which makes your picture look a lot cleaner. And I absolutely love this slider and I use it in every single of my pictures. Pay close attention to this very dark road as I reset the effect to the default and you see everything starts to get a lot more purple and green sensor noise in it and everything looks just not as smooth and not not as clean as it does with the color noise reduction slider to the right. If you have a raw file, the general default will be at 25 and if you have a JPEG file, this will be at zero. And I would suggest you to just bring that to the right until you don't see any green or purple color noise in your picture while being zoomed in either one to one or two to one. Also a thing that I want to mention, it doesn't really have any bad effect on your overall color of your picture. If you go from about 80 to 100, it just brings down the green saturations a very tiny bit of your, uh, you know, clean areas such as these trees. And I would suggest you just to bring that to the right until it looks good, even if it is above 80. Uh, it really doesn't matter very much if you just lose a little bit of saturation in your greens. It's really almost negligible and keep in mind we're zoomed in here 2 to 1 and this will be about the equivalent of your picture being on a house wall and you're you know a few inches away from it. So keep all of that in mind but generally I like to go around 65 to maybe 80 and that usually does the job. So once again here is a default and once again pay close attention to these dark areas, especially the road, as I bring that slider to the right. Then you have two sub-sliders for the color noise reduction, which is detail and smoothness. I really don't use these sliders because they have such a small impact. Detail will try to get a little bit more detail back in your picture if you bring it to the right and kind of get rid of some detail if you bring it to the left. But even zoomed in two to one, it's almost no difference at all. And I really would suggest you not to play around with it. It's just not worth it. Smoothness is just, you know, it kind of tries to smooth out all of these areas that might still have a little bit of color noise left. It has a bit of a bigger effect than the detail tool, but also I would really not suggest you to move this in either way because 50 is really usually a good value. Actually, a thing that I should probably do is collapse all of these other modules just so you see uh, it better if I just demonstrate all of these adjustments. But if I go over it once again, the color noise reduction slider, just bring that to the right until all of the green and purple sensor noise is gone while you're zoomed in one to one or two to one. Then the next slider you have is the noise reduction tool and the luminance slider by bringing that one to the right you will get rid of a lot of the noise in your picture. However, the way it does that is just by making the entire picture 
taking away the detail and making it more blurry. And I really would not suggest you to use it unless you absolutely have to, because especially if you pay attention to these trees right here, if I reset that, you see there are a lot, a lot more detail in these trees and in your entire picture. It does get rid of some of that noise, but uh, you know, we're zoomed in two to one here. And especially if you even print your picture, you really won't see noise at all. I actually tried that out on a bunch of different papers. So I would really not suggest you to move this slider at all unless you have a ton of noise and maybe it's a good idea to zoom back to one to one here. So you see kind of a broader area and you see the noise a little bit less distinctive because keep in mind, uh, we have a very, very small area of this whole picture. And if you look at it as a whole, you're really not going to see any noise. And sometimes, once again, especially in print, it can even help to give your picture sort of a character. And by bringing the slider to the right, even just a little bit, you will get rid of a lot, a lot of detail. And once again, I really would not suggest you to use it unless you have just a ton of noise. But in this picture, I really don't think it's needed. And you know, in uh, quite a lot of my pictures, I like to bring up the shadows and make it very dynamic, contrasty, and even then I really don't see any need to use any noise reduction. Of course I generally shoot all of my pictures at ISO 100, but uh, even if you shoot a little bit above that, I really once again don't think that it's a necessary thing to worry about. Let's just bring that slider to the right regardlessly so I can show you the detail and contrast tool. It's pretty much the same story as with the sub sliders of the color noise reduction tool. It's really a, such a small difference that it's really not even worth to play around with in my opinion. But here you could try to retrieve some more detail. I don't really think it works all that well. And if you add noise reduction, just leaving it at default works the best in my opinion. And by bringing the contrast slider to the right, you add a little bit of contrast and try to kind of give some sharpness back in the picture with that. But once again, really don't think it's, you know, a big difference whatsoever. And it's also not really looking any better if you ask me. So as a summary for the noise reduction slider, just be sure to be zoomed in one to one. And unless you have a ton of noise, I would just suggest you to leave it at zero because it takes away a lot of the detail and makes your whole picture sort of blurry, which is an effect that is not really needed and can oftentimes have more bad than good impact in your photo. So then let's go to sharpening, actually a tool that I do like. And let's zoom in 2 to 1 for that one again. And of course, as the name already applies, by bringing that slider to the right, you add additional sharpening to your picture. I shot this picture particularly on a Canon 50mm f1.8 lens, which is a $100 very cheap lens. So not the sharpest thing in the world, but as you see, even with such a lens, we have a lot of detail. And I really like to bring some sharpening sharpening in my picture regardless because it really can make your picture look even sharper and especially if you have a cheap and not so sharp lens but also if you have a very expensive lens by just bringing the sharpening slider a little bit to the right you can oftentimes greatly improve the overall crispness of your picture. So I would suggest you if you have a very cheap you know kit lens or something like that I usually like to bring the sharpening to around 60 to maybe 80. And if you have a very sharp lens already, then of course you don't want to do it as much. But uh, definitely don't really go beyond 80, maybe 90 in some cases, because then you're really going to get a lot of artifacts and it will make your picture look very unnatural and very unpleasant. So once again, if you have a kit lens or a very cheap, uh, you know, not very sharp lens, I would suggest you to bring the sharpening to around 60 to 80 in all of the cases. And if you have a very good L lens or something like that, 
then I would still add some sharpening, but not quite as much. So once you've found the right value for your sharpening, a very important thing is that you actually zoom out completely and see your whole picture and then press down the Alt key if you have a Windows computer, if you have a Mac, I believe it's a CMD, although I'm not sure. But by having the Alt key pressed down, you can now select the masking slider and bring that one to the right. And what this is, is a representation of the sharpening of your picture. So pretty much everywhere where it is white, your picture is going to be sharpened. Uh, the amount of sharpening that you've previously selected is going to be applied in the white areas and all of the black areas will not be affected by any sharpening. And the reason you want to bring that to the right is because if I, for example, go here in the sky, you see there is no detail in it. So if we would have just a masking at zero, it sometimes can give you an artifact and give you a very unnatural sort of look because of course there is no actual texture or detail that can be enhanced and sharpened there. Same thing applies with uh, water, any smooth long exposure elements, anything without any texture really. So I'm just gonna hold down the old key once again and bring the masking slider to the right. And generally I like to bring it to around 60 to maybe 80. It really depends on the actual picture. But for example here, uh, you don't have to have a perfect, you know, it doesn't matter if there's a little area still selected in the sky, but you just want to make sure that you generally don't have any lakes or skies or anything like that selected. So I'm gonna leave it, I think around 60 here for this photo. And uh, once again, the white parts are actually going to be affected by sharpening and the black parts are not going to be affected with sharpening. So now that we've done all of that, I'm gonna zoom back in two to one and uh, I'm also going to cover this radius and detail slider. By bringing the detail tool to the right, you can get even extra detail uh, out of it that kind of determines which method and how drastic your edges will be sharpened. But here, once again, not the biggest difference in the world. And generally, I like to just leave it at default because sometimes if you bring it too far, it can make your edges look a little bit uh, unnatural and even give halo and artifacts in some cases. So I'm just gonna leave that at default here. And the radius is just how big your actual sharpening will be. Once again here, I would just suggest you to leave it at zero because otherwise some very small uh, structures that are just a few pixels wide might not get sharpened as good. So I think that pretty much sums it up. Once again, color noise reduction slider, just bring that to the right until you don't see any green and purple sensor noise in your photo. Noise reduction, just use that if you have a ton of noise, otherwise it uh, really takes away a lot of detail and blurs your picture. Sharpening, I would just suggest you do bring that to the right to around 60 to 80 if you have a very sharp lens, a little bit less. And of course, zoom back out again, hold down the Alt key and bring the masking slider to the right until all of the non-textured surfaces are black. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one, other Lightroom tutorials, landscape edits, and all sorts of photography related videos. And if you could take a quick second to give me a thumbs up, that would be hugely appreciated and really helps out the channel a lot. So once again, thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below if this was helpful to you or if you have any comments or questions, of course, I'm gonna try to answer them there. And yeah, I wish you a great day. Go out there and take some awesome pictures. And of course, as always, take care.